taking my first breath here in Lhasa and it feels great. That's right friends, I made it to Tibet and let me tell you, this place is pure magic. Over the next few weeks, I'll be sharing some incredible videos from the roof of the world, where you feel like you're almost touching the sky in China. And what a beautiful sky it is. It's been an amazing journey that took me to the spiritual heart of Tibetan Buddhism. You see these monks? They're debating. Through imposing mountains and never-ending meadows. What? Look at this! Amazing! And right into the embrace of some of the nicest people I've ever met. My mouth muscles are very tense right now from smiling and the picture is not done yet. So get ready for breathtaking views. Please take a breath. Wow. Brace yourself for unexpected twists. The way it's dangerous to take a nap on the road here in Tibet. Expect close encounters with nature. Okay. <laughs> Someone's feeling a little bit frisky. And did I mention a potential career change? $20. Right here, in both of these hands. So buckle up, because we're about to embark on a journey unlike any other. I believe I can fly! <laughs> but first, we're kicking things off from Lhasa, the heart of it all. And more specifically, Tibet University. And if there's one thing that I've learned from this trip, it's that things don't always go according to plan. You'll see what I mean in the next video. And so, as a former student at a Chinese university, I initially wanted a tour around campus. You know, to compare and contrast. And I had a guide ready to take me around. We had briefly spoken before filming, but as we got to know each other more, it became clear to me that she could be my window into learning more about Tibet. And so, unexpectedly, she became the subject of this video. And so, without further ado, here's our conversation. <sighs> All right. Are you, are, do, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you want to introduce yourself? Okay. Hello, guys. This is Digi Yanzum, and I come from Lhasa. Now it's the last year in Tibet University as a graduate student. So let's just get started. Why did you choose Tibet University? Actually, um, when I was in, uh, when I was a graduate from the primary school, mm. I went to the outside, and I spent six years uh, in terms of my junior high and high school in Shanghai, and then I spent four years in Xiamen to do my college life. And how, then, how was that for you? I was very young, like just almost uh, maybe 20, uh, 12, mm. 12. So actually, at the first time when I came to the Shanghai, it was a little bit, you know homesick and I was always calling my parents and sometimes I would go cry like I want to go home because you then, were so young yeah yeah so that's the reason and um, the interesting thing is uh, the more years I spent uh, outside and the more I want to go back to here really yeah why is that I don't know I don't know how to describe this kind of feeling but a lot of my uh, including my friends or my classmates are uh, Tibetan mm. I mean most of them, they have this kind of feeling. I mean, you grew up in Lhasa, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. So that's home to you. But then yeah. you went to Shanghai. Mm -hmm. Like in China, everyone wants to go to, like yeah. everyone wants to live in Shanghai. Yeah. Not me, I have to say, not me. <laughs> but everyone else wants to live in Shanghai. Yeah. I am team Beijing from now till eternity. Mm -hmm. But 10 years away from Lhasa. Yeah. So why come back? Like, what? Okay, why? <laughs> Actually, um, I have to say Shanghai is a very amazing city, like you know, right? But I don't know how to describe this kind of, you know, feeling. Like why I sometimes I just wondering why I want to, like I need to, like I have to come back to this place. I can't tell the, you know, this kind of. It's just. Is it like it's calling your name? Like it's like this place is yeah. like. It's like Young, come back, come back. Is it like that? Yeah, uh, sort of. I never thought like uh, I will spend the rest of my life in other city. Mm. Yeah. Uh, also, so in a way, you knew that you will always come back. Yeah. Eventually, I still home, will choose to yeah come back to my home. Yeah, you know they say there's there's no better place than home. Yeah. Do you, I agree. Do you agree? can't agree as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And can you tell me how is the difference between living in cities like Shanghai or Xiamen and living in Lhasa? The pace of life. Mm. You know, in uh, in Lhasa, uh, the older people they will choose tea house to spend their spare time, mm. and young people like us we prefer to do the coffee shop. Okay. To spend and and you can see. Uh, like uh, I can't say everyone, but most people, it's just they their pace of life is very slow and very peaceful. But in Shanghai, you know, people fast, is, fast, fast, yes, fast, fast, it's fast, always fast. very busy and it's always very fast the pace of life. That's I think the, the biggest difference for me. It's the same in it's Beijing. The same in Beijing. Yeah, Beijing is like it's breathless, fast. it's relentless, <laughs> exactly. it, it's, it's a never-ending hustle, like just grinding day in day out, day in day out. So you know there. A lot of people they will choose to come to Tibet to, to know, relax. Tra- yeah, to relax, to travel, and to you know have a short break in their tough life. Yeah. Just like slow, just yeah, like relax, okay. and we can do what we want to do, but just not instead of like uh, something is pushing us. I don't like this kind of feeling. Explain that to me. What do you mean? Um, like in. Like I mentioned, it's a very peaceful and the pace of life is very slow. So mm. you can, you know, uh, do the things that you... from your own pace. You don't need to follow other persons. It's like um, because you know we know in big cities, you know, so much competition. Yeah. Yeah. Too much competition. In Chinese, we just call it a jun, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know that, right? I know that. Yeah. Yes. But I think it's much better than this place. We can't tell. There is no any competition, but it's much better than other big cities. You said ten years away from Lhasa. How did Lhasa change? Because like cities are living organisms, you know, like they breathe, yeah. they change. <laughs> so how did Lhasa change in your eyes? Most all those things is buildings, high buildings. Okay. You know when I when I just graduated from the elementary school. You know, there are a lot of houses, but it's just lower than the average. After 10 years, we can see, right, you, when you mm. came to the Tibet University, there are a lot of buildings, it's just much one higher than one. And also the transportation. Mm. There Now we got a lot of trends, right, between the different cities in Tibet, right, from Lhasa to Shikate, from because used we don't have the that convenient mm. transportation. There's a whole expressway from Beijing to Tibet. Like you can actually drive from Beijing to Tibet. But it's too tired. It so. is very. I, mean, yeah. I, I flew in right here. But like, if someone wants a road trip, they can mm-hmm. go on a yeah. on a road trip from Maybe Beijing. Maybe it would be home. interesting, but it's a little bit tired. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you were outside, like in Shanghai and Xi'an. Do, do you think that, or when you're traveling, because you're when you're traveling, do you think that people were had any questions to you about Tibet or being Tibetan or? Yeah, Lhasa is not a big city, right? Mm. So, you know, there are a lot of people they have never been there. Mm. So, you know, they will have kind of stereotype, mm. like like a, what? Like a, uh, my Mandarin. I speak Mandarin very well. They will ask me like, "Are you Tibetan?" And um, I was like. Yeah, I'm Tibetan. You don't look like Tibetan. And I was like, mm, so what Tibetan should look like? Yeah. They were like the red blush mm. and they were long uh, hair yeah. and they were tied it up. And then uh, maybe their skin, even though my skin is not very mm. <laughs> white, but their skin is more dark. I mean, it's sunny. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's... So, and also they, maybe they can, cannot speak Mandarin very well, so okay. it's kind of stereotype because they have never been there or they have never, yeah. So met. what is your answer to that? And I told them, like, uh, not every Tibetan, they have washed their hairstyle just like that. And there are also a lot of uh, Tibetan people just like, like me, and mm. also our Mandarin can speak as well as you guys. To you, what does it mean to be Tibetan then? Um, language maybe? Okay. Language is kind of identity, right? Because every uh, 
we can tell the minority they have yeah. their own languages. So even though in outside of the Tibet, when we talk to each other, I, I mean among the Tibetan people, we will speak Tibetan language. Mm. If you, if you as a Tibetan, you can't speak Tibetan language. It sounds like kind of you know hilarious. Okay. Do you learn Tibetan at school? In elementary school, we have Tibetan class. Okay. And also in junior high, we have Tibetan. So when you say Tibetan class, is it just Tibetan language, or do you are you saying that all the classes are taught in Tibetan? Of course, we taught the class in Tibetan language, and also it's about Tibetan culture, okay. Tibetan history. We okay. have Yu Wen Ke, right? Oh, yeah. It's a Dan Wen Ke. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's taught in Tibetan language. Okay. And how important for you is it to learn Mandarin? I think Mandarin is very important because it's our kind of native language, right? So we use like every day, right, in our daily life. We and also for communication in other cities. Yeah. So Mandarin is, of course, it, it is also very important. And also in Tibet, most young people, they speak Mandarin very well, but there are still some older... Uh, the older generation. Yeah, the older generation. But not all of them. Some of them, they can't speak Mandarin very well. So, as a last thing, I uh, I think it's time to wrap up because I didn't. Ex- I, I was like, oh, let's just do a fifty minute thing, and then <laughs> now it's been like we talk to 45, 45 minutes. But like, I, I thank you so much mm-hmm. for sitting down with me and sharing about your experience as a student here and a student in other cities in China, and just like just telling me about your life story, which mm-hmm. I truly appreciate. Um, is there anything that you want to say before we wrap this up? Actually, I had a very good time today and I was really glad to meet you. And hopefully everyone can have a good time and um, welcome to Tibet to travel. I'm here waiting for you. Bye. Oh, and then tell them as well to follow me. Okay, follow Nadim Kamen. And subscribe. Leave your comment and subscribe. Okay. <laughs> she's a natural <laughs> content creator. She's a she's a natural upshoot. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, well, this was it. This um, I truly had a wonderful time, and I'll see you in another video. Okay. This was all from me. I have a special outro, which is I would always say this is all for this week. I will see you next time. Zaijian. Do you want to say it? Okay. Okay. This, this is, is all, all from me for, for this, this week. week. I will see, see you next, next time. time. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so sorry. And I'm this like... is the library. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>